Welcome back. I'm glad you're still with us here on Morning at TV. It's uh, 20 minutes to the top of the hour, that is uh, 9 a.m. And uh, let's take note of uh, the engineering sector. Now, when you hear the word engineering, there's a lot that is in it. Many times we look at the magnificent works that we see. Uh, could be on the roads, could be within the technological sectors, and we marvel at the kind of work uh, that it is. But do we know the people who are up to this work? What do they do? Where are they? What do they speak? What language for that matter? It's a lot that uh, we shall be uh, looking at. But the concept of engineering has existed since ancient times as humans devised the fundamental inventions such as the pulley, the lever and the wheel. Each of these inventions is consistent with the modern definition of engineering, exploiting basic mechanical principles to develop useful tools and objects. For this discussion, to understand how things have been shaping up in the engineering sector in Uganda, I'm joined by engineer Bosco Lepi. He's the vice president, membership education and training at the Uganda Institution of Professional Engineers. You're most welcome. Thank you for having me. How are you doing? I'm okay. Oh, great. I hope I got that right. Uganda Institution of Professional Engineers, or there is another acronym. Yeah, thank you, Chris. You got it right. Okay. That is the name of the institution. Yeah. yeah. So, engineering is basically a sector or everything that we stand on. The physics of movement, how we do things, is hinged on engineering. The history there and the overview is one that could be too deep for us to cover on Morning at <laughs> TV. True. But... If I were to tell the story of engineering in Uganda, what are those standout issues that you could share with us? Yeah, thank you, Chris, and uh, good morning, our viewers. I'm glad to be here. Mm. Um, I'm from Uganda Institution of Professional Engineers. Uh, so engineering plays a very critical role mm. in the national development. Uh, you have rightfully put it, you, you, you have so many structures that you see, uh, the transport we use, mm. the planes we use, That's and good. so on. All these are the works of engineers. Mm. So uh, for us, uh, we are here to support the national development. Mm. Yes. Mm. Mm. Okay, supporting national development. Right now, what are the groundbreaking uh, development projects that uh, you are undertaking within the ages of the association but also as individual actors what is the practice landscape like for engineers in Uganda yeah thank you Chris uh, I think it is important to take you through some of the basics mm. uh, first and foremost is to let you know about the institution yeah. which, which I serve uh, um, UIPE is a professional body mm. which was formed way back in 1972 to bring together all the engineers in the country. Yeah. Uh, so far we are happy to report about uh, 7,000 membership but we are still growing. Mm. So in it we have different sectors, we have the civil engineers, mm. these are people who construct buildings, construct roads, uh, develop water facilities and so on. Yeah. We also have the mechanical engineers, mm. uh, the equipment you use, uh, the planes, uh, uh, and so many mechanical equipment. Yeah. Uh, we also have uh, electrical engineers. These are engineers that play critical roles in electricity, mm. electricity distribution, supplies, yeah. and so on. So uh, in a nutshell, we have a range of engineers mm. that do different things. But in a nutshell, all this is supposed to facilitate, mm. facilitate uh, service delivery and also the public, mm. uh, public good. Okay. Mm. When it comes to the multiplicity of uh, things that engineers are up to, the aspect of standards comes in. Yes. How are we faring when it comes to conduct? First, qualification, mm -hmm. and then how does that help in fighting the quacks? because <laughs> quacks are everywhere, including yes. engineering, yes. and uh, that could be responsible for some of the disasters that we see uh, at any one point in time. How does the association uh, ensure that at least all that are practicing engineering across the country are known 
and doing the right thing. Yeah, thank you, Chris. Uh, one of the reasons why I'm here mm. is to let known to the public That's right. that we have those quacks, uh, as, as I can quote from your word. Yeah. Yes. Uh, as a professional body, mm. we bring together all these uh, uh, professionals to do to provide services to our public. We have very strict uh, conducts, mm. uh, ethical conducts to follow, to comply with. Uh, now, uh, when it comes to discharging these duties, uh, there's a procedure mm. for you to be uh, registered. Uh, let me also inform you that uh, we have the UIPE and also the ERB. UIPE is the professional body mm. that brings together all these engineers. All engineers yeah. But for regulation purpose, mm. we have the board. Yeah. Uh, ERB is part of part of government. Mm. It, it does regulation. So for you to be regulated, uh, you have to be a member of the institution. It mm. is by law. Mm. Uh, you register with us, membership of UIPE, then you transit to, to, to register with the board for regulation purpose. Yeah. So what I want the public to know is that uh, uh, as any service provider, mm. for us also we trade in our skills. We trade in our skills that as engineers. Right. Yeah. yeah. So at the end of it all, the board will give you alliances. Mm. Alliances which will allow you to practice in that particular field. That's right. It comes with very, very strict uh, uh, codes which you are supposed to comply with. Mm. So the public is advised each and um, each and every time you want to pay for yeah. that service. Mm. Ensure that the engineer who is going to offer that service is having a valid, a valid license. license yeah. Yeah, yeah. And so, the valid license in means that somebody has been able to renew it. Yes. After the license. It is renewable five, every after one year. After every one year. Y yes. If one doesn't renew it, they shouldn't do the job. You, you, can't, you can't do that because okay. uh, in the process of renewal, <coughs> Excuse me. Mm. We get the report within this yeah, one well, year or so. Yeah, how have you been performing? Okay. Is there any ethical issues that was recorded in the mm. public? Mm. Yeah. So that is the responsibility of the board to ensure that the the, the services mm. we provide to our public mm. is up to date for okay. public safety. Uh, very quickly, do you have any concerns about the legislative framework right now? Anything that ought to be worked on? Uh, yeah. Uh, thank you, Chris. Uh, uh, the the, the law which we are now working, we, we are using, uh. is a bit, uh, it has taken a lot of time, uh. and you are aware that uh, uh, in Uganda a lot of things have changed. Uh. So this is the law which was uh, formed in 1969. So um, it is good we have embarked on an amendment process uh. to incorporate some of the new things, new things that, that are happening. Yeah. Yes, uh, it is in process now to proceed and amend this law to incorporate, in fact, uh, the direction it is taking now mm. is bringing more on board. Mm. Because in, um, in providing this service, there are also engineering professionals, other professionals yeah. that do support us in this. So while you have the engineers, mm. you also have technicians and technology. Mm. So this new law is going to be inclusive. All the technicians and technology will now be together housed in the same association. Okay. Yes. Oh, that's good. We yeah. hope uh, everything works out exactly how you want it and uh, for the good of the country. Now, very quickly, what is reverse engineering? Well, reverse engineering is when you have a facility, you dissect mm -hmm. and go back, try to understand how this thing came into existence. Okay. It is uh, what has helped some of the countries to develop. Mm. You first get the product, dissect it, and then go backwards mm. to understand very well how did this process take place to give us what we are now having. Yeah. So oh. reverse engineering is mm. very important mm. because it helps to start from what you are seeing mm. and then you go backwards. What are we reverse engineering in Uganda today? Uh, in Uganda, we we are not um, we, we, we we I cannot uh, uh, mention so many of them, mm. but it's a spirit which uh, we have to take. There are so many things that are already done. Mm. We have electronics and then so many things in the space. Mm. So we have to pick this, dissect, and understand 
how this thing came into and into existence. And how like, can we move towards that direction? What kind of government support is needed away from the legislative uh, framework? Uh, I think uh, the main focus now should be on research and development. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of potentials. We have so many young engineers that are coming. These are very vibrant young people mm -hmm. and they need to be supported. Okay. Even this reverse engineering and so on, they can do it so, so, so well. Mm -hmm. What they need, first of all, is that support, the moral support to show them the way. That's right. Then secondly, support them by giving the facilities. Mm. I'm happy government has opened a number of uh, research facilities uh, and, and, and it is our wish mm. that uh, we put our hands together to support our young ones to take research mm. and innovation very seriously. Okay. Yes. Uh, Engineer Lepi, thank you very much. You're welcome. This has been very prompt. But yes. uh, most importantly, we've understood exactly where we are and what we need to uh, be able to work on, especially with regard to improving our own uh, trajectory, especially when it comes to engineering. Uh, that will do it for Take Note. I hope it has emboldened your understanding of matters engineering. Let me now go to uh, Stephen Ibide, who is on the ground, to bring us the Nyombi Tembo there, engineer and of course uh, executive director of Uganda Communications Commission. He's a member of the Uganda Institution of uh, Professional Engineers, giving his two cents there on some of the issues within the Media Act implementation. Let me return to the studio now and uh, give engineer Bosco Lepi, the vice president at the Uganda Institution of Professional Engineers, a last word. Yeah, thank you, Chris. Uh, my last word is one. Mm -hmm. Uh, we, we have the World Engineering Day, mm. which is coming on the 4th of March uh, this year. So I invite all of us to come and participate. Uh, then secondly, the institution is going through uh, the process to get new leaders. I happen to be one of the presidential candidates. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So um, I, I urge the voters to take their, their role and vote wisely, vote be in office. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much. Bosco Lepi, engineer and vice president at the Uganda Institution of Professional Engineers for emboldening our, our understanding of everything engineering, especially that's going on in the country. That will do it for this edition of Morning at NTV. It's been a pleasure having your company. We'll be with you tomorrow. Have a nice day.